Welcome to another exciting micro nugget compliments of cbtnuggets.com. My name is Anthony Sequera and I am going to walk you through a little slice of Keith Barker and myself's exam walkthrough for Cisco's exam 100-101. That's the ICND1 exam which leads to the CCENT certification. Here's a little OSPF simulation for you. This is OSPF sim number one in our micro nugget series. This was not covered in our course, so this is going to be bonus materials for subscribers to Keith and I's course. Let's jump in. So here is our simulation question. We're to configure the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interfaces of R1 and R2 for OSPF. We're to use a process ID of 10 and ensure that R1 and R2 use router IDs of 1111 and 2222 respectfully. We're to enable OSPF on loopback 10 on R1 and ensure R2 can reach this interface when our simulation is complete. Wow. You know what I'm going to do in order to solve this simulation? I'm going to go, and you won't be surprised, I'm a huge fan of my scratch paper. That's right, I'm going to go to my whiteboard that they give me, and I'm going to go ahead and sketch out everything I need to do. Their sketch doesn't nearly have enough detail, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, all right, I've got R1 and R2, I've got my 0 slash 0 interfaces, and I'm going to just really start sketching it out. They want a process ID of 10. So I'll go ahead and note that OSPF 10. They want loopback, uh, excuse me, they want router IDs of quad ones and quad twos. Okay. They want a loopback 10 on R1 and they want to ensure that R2 can reach that. So I'm going to ping loopback 10 when I'm done. So do whatever system of notation that is comfortable for you on your scratch paper that will literally become a checklist for you as you make the configurations. When you get OSPF 10 all peered up, you could check that. When you get the router IDs properly set up, you could check those. When you get loopback 10 advertised, you could check that. And finally, when you can ping loopback 10 from R2, you know you've achieved 100% of the points in this simulation. So I'm a huge fan in certain instances in the simulations of making my own diagram, of making a series of checklists that I'm going to use to ensure I get my full points. Now let's go at it. Let me walk you through how I would configure this particular simulation. So I will start over on R1 and I will start with show IP interface brief. And I'm just going to kind of survey the landscape here. What's going on? Okay, there's a fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface in 172.16.1.1. And then there's that loopback 10 that they referenced. I also noticed that there is no loopback address with 1.1.1.1 assigned. So they want a router ID of 1.1.1.1 and I now quickly realize that I can use the router ID in order to do that assignment. Otherwise, I'd have to create a loopback, assign an IP address. That sounds like way too much work for this simple simulation. So one of the things that I'll do here before I attempt OSPF is I want to verify connectivity. Now I'll go ahead and make a guess that R2 is at 172.16.1.2. They did not show us that in the diagram, but that is a common convention. Let me try it. Ping 172.16.1.2. Yes, indeed. Look at that. So R2 is reachable over that fast Ethernet link. So, wow, they made it easy on us. The two devices have IP reachability with each other. All right, here we go. We'll go into global configuration mode. We'll say router OSPF 10. Remember, that process ID they wanted of 10. 
Think of how easy it would be to go into. In fact, I almost just did it. I had muscle memory almost take over there, and I almost did OSPF with a process ID of one, something I do in the lab environment again and again and again and again. That almost took control there. My goodness, that's freaky. Okay, now what do we need to do under here? Well, how about router ID and our quad ones? We need to get that checked off our list, and I better have good syntax or it's not going to like that very much. So there we go. And now, two options. We could do our network command, or we could go under the interfaces. Tell you what, on this router, I'll demonstrate the network command and how I would do it. I would say network 172.16.1.1, and I would say every single bit counts in that IP address. I'd use an all zeros wildcard mask, and I would say this is going to be area zero. They didn't mention what area. We can safely assume it's area zero that we're configuring here. Then my network statement for the loopback. The loopback is at 10, 10, 10, 1. Again, our quad zeros, and we're going to put that in area zero. Awesome. I will go ahead and end this configuration. I'll stare at it for a moment to make sure I got everything done. In fact, I'll turn to my scratch paper and I'll place my check marks. We got OSPF with a process ID of 10. We got a router ID of quad ones. We successfully enabled OSPF for area zero on 172.16.1.1. That's fast ethernet zero slash zero, by the way. And 10, 10, 10, 1, that's loopback 10, by the way. I'm feeling great. In fact, I'm feeling so great, I'll boldly do a copy run star in the simulation. If we do not do this, if we do not save our configuration, we will not achieve full points. I repeat, do not save your configuration, you will not achieve full points. And simulations, as we covered with you in this examination environment, are indeed partial credit. All right, I'm gonna slide over to R2 and I'm going to go into global configuration mode and I'm going to say router OSPF 10. Be very careful here because you could miss this and do one and you'd still peer, but you would miss points in the grading. I'm going to do router ID 2222. And then on this one, I'll go under the fast ethernet zero slash zero interface and I'll demonstrate IP OSPF area zero. How you can easily, uh oh, got a syntax error. Let's check out what's going on. IP OSPF, oh, better put the process ID of 10 and then area zero. And that's exactly what would happen in the exam environment. You would get a syntax error helping you get full points. Thank you very much, Cisco IOS. And look at this, this is starting to look really good. We just got an adjacency from neighbor 1111 for process 10. We just verified our neighbor, is it the router ID 1111? I'll circle that on my scratch paper. It is configured and verified. How awesome. Show IP OSPF on this router. We are ID 2222. I can circle that on my scratch paper. It is configured and verified. OSPF 10 on each router. Yes, verified. Folks, you know what's up now. There's only one thing left to do, and that is ping the loopback address on R1. If we can reach it, we have gotten full points in this simulation. We're done. Now, if you're paranoid, you can do this. Show IP route OSPF, and you can actually physically see the loopback prefix in your routing table on R2, and that's fine. If you want to do that extra verification, that's fine. Just remember, don't get too carried away with extra verifications because the timer is ticking as you are taking your actual exam. I got to tell you, I absolutely love exam simulations. I could do them all day. I do. I really do. I love them. When I get an exam simulation in the exam environment, I want to do a cartwheel like I'm a child. All right, so, boy, am I in a weird mood today. Sorry. So, look, what did we do? 
Well, we configured OSPF 10 between these two devices. We configured our router IDs. That was simple. We made sure loopback 10 was advertised into OSPF, and we tested this with a ping to that loopback. We got full points. Gotta love this exam 100-101 sample simulation, and it is building our confidence in the configuration and verification of single area OSPF. I hope this nugget has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.